Most transition metals can exist in multiple oxidation states. If we look at the first row transition metals alone, we can see the many oxidation states that they can adopt. The oxidation state of a transition metal is very important in determining its structure and function. For example, let's look at two oxidation states of chromium, chromium-3 and chromium-6. Chromium-3 complexes are octahedral, while chromium-6 complexes are tetrahedral. Chromium-6 complexes tend to be more brightly coloured than chromium-3. And while chromium-3 is an essential metal, sometimes prescribed as a dietary supplement, chromium-6 is carcinogenic. When working out the oxidation state of a metal from its formula, the most important principle to remember is that the sum of the charges of all of the ions in the complex must equal the overall net charge of the complex. It might be helpful to follow these steps. Firstly, look at the net charge of the complex. Secondly, look at the ligands and their charges. This will require remembering the charges on common ligands like amine and water, which are neutral, and chlorido and hydroxido, which are minus one. Thirdly, take the difference between the overall net charge and the sum of the charges on the ligands to determine the oxidation state of the metal ion. Let's look at a few examples. Let's work out the oxidation state of cobalt in this complex. Let's follow the steps. Firstly, we want to know the overall net charge of the complex. So we can look at this number here to tell us that the overall charge is 2 plus. Secondly, we need to look at the ligands and their charges. There is only one ligand in this complex, which is water. Water is a neutral ligand, so the overall ligand charge is zero. Thirdly, we take the overall charge of two plus and subtract the ligand charge of zero, and this gives us a charge on cobalt of two plus. It tells us that cobalt is in the two plus oxidation state. Here's another example to work out the oxidation state of palladium in this complex. This complex is neutral, so it has no net charge. We have two types of ligands here, a chlorido ligand, which has a minus one charge, and an amine ligand, which is neutral. Because we have two chlorido ligands, the overall ligand charge will be two minus. So now we take the overall charge of zero and subtract the, the ligand overall charge, which is two minus, and this gives us an oxidation state for palladium of two plus calculate the oxidation state of iron in this complex. First, the superscript symbol tells us that we have a net charge on the complex of 3 minus. Now we look at the ligands. We have these cyanido ligands which have a charge of 1 minus. Because we have six of these ligands, the overall ligand charge is 6 minus. So now we take the overall charge of the complex of 3 minus subtract the six minus charge on the ligands, and this tells us the iron has an oxidation state of three plus. Oxidation states can be written either using Roman numerals inside parentheses or as a superscript after the element symbol. But when we use the full element name, Roman numerals are used. So let's look at our three examples. Cobalt was a cobalt two plus oxidation state and so it can be written in one of these three forms. Notice that when we use the full word cobalt, we only give it in terms of the Roman numerals. Also notice that there is no space between the element name or the element symbol and the parentheses. We calculated that palladium had an oxidation state of two plus and so it can be written in these forms. And finally, we calculated that iron had an oxidation state of three plus and it can be written like this.